podcast. I am filming from Brisbane, Australia, where I live with my husband Ryan and our pets Cookie the dog and Possum and Moon the Burke parakeets. Um, it's really good to have you back if you're a subscriber or if you're a new viewer, welcome. It's really great to have you here. Um, so first up today, I am going to draw the winner for the very first giveaway from episode one. Um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to rerun that giveaway, but I thought I've got um, two entrants, so I will just put them into the random uh generator thing, number generator, and um, draw that so I can get this lovely book out to someone. Um, so uh, if you don't remember, the giveaway was for this book, Aussie Fair by Liz Jemmel, and I've actually acquired her other book, um, Woolly Jumpers. And it's got lots of intarsia or picture knitting patterns in it. So the giveaway is actually now for two books, which is very exciting. Um, so the winner that drew out was Fran Mann, um, whose favorite animal, Australian animal, was the koala. I have to agree. It's so cute. Um, yeah, so Fran, if you can uh, contact me on Instagram or Ravelry and give me your address, then I can send these out to you and you can start knitting some lovely Aussie things or some um, Fair Isle cardigans of your own design. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Okay, so first up I'm going to show you some finished objects. There are not a lot this week. Um, so the first one is a project bag. I found some fabric that I had used for um, making Ryan a tie. This is everyone at his school's favorite tie of his. <laughs> it's very fun. Um, and this time I've put a little D-ring. I think they look a lot nicer than um, the, I had a normal key ring holder thing on the last one I made. Um, yeah, so this one, Worked out well. I forgot to put a pocket in, but oh well. Um, and I've got the inside is this lovely orange. Um, so I didn't have any fabric to go with the, the orange colours. And I remembered that I had mum's old stash of Rip downstairs. So I just got out that she had some like tangerine, I think it's called orange Rit. So I just dyed up some cotton fabric with that and it was perfect. Um, so I've got a whip inside here, which I'll share in a minute. Um, but I'll just share the next one. Is actually not quite a finished object, but it is like, because I'm making multiple of the same things. So. I've got my little basket here of Christmas knitting. Um, I haven't, it's, it's gonna get to like Christmas Eve and I'll still be knitting these little socks, I bet you. Um, but they're very cute. I'm just going to make these little socks some um, teeny tiny jumpers and my mum has been helping me. She's made um, some tiny mittens, little gloves. So we're gonna make a cute bunting for near the kitchen, I think, um, for Christmas time. So we've got a little while before December 1st when the tree goes up. Um, but yeah, I just thought, use up some of the yarn that grandma gave me and then we just had to buy some green. Um, and I've got this one from last episode in there. I don't know what that will become. Maybe a jump, tiny jumper. Um, yeah, so these are so cute little feral things. Um, this took me like a couple of hours one evening and then, so I got to about there, well, a couple of hours. I don't know how long it was and then finished that in the morning and um, sewed in on the ends and seamed up the 
the side. So they are knit flat and then the seam runs down the back there. You saw a little button. Um, I'll show you the pattern as well, the printed one I have. Um, it's my little cotton rabbits um, and I'll show you another thing that she um, she made a pattern for next. Oh, words. Um, so that's all the little variations that you can knit up and of course you could put in your own designs in the ferrule as well but I wanted to show you the printout. It's a free pattern so I can do this um, because it has, so there are all the ferrule options. It has picture instructions as well and I thought that was really good because sometimes um, especially with little fiddly things, instructions can sometimes be a little unclear. So if you have a picture there, um, it makes it so much easier. Yeah, but I really like, I got this basket the other week at the op shop as well. So that's just sitting on um, the kitchen table at the moment. And mom and I sometimes just sit there at night and um, knit. So I'm really gonna have to get a move on <laughs> and do some more. Okay, on to whips. Um, there aren't that many whips either this week, um, but I'll share this first one. It's also from Little Cotton Rabbits, and it is the Little Girl Rabbit. And I have done her little head, minus the embroidery on the face, which I'm sorry, it would have been so much cuter to show with <laughs> that, but oh well. Um, so I've done the head and the start of the torso. So she is a little white rabbit and she's going to have brown ears and brown arms. And then she's got leggings on. They're so cute. This pattern is adorable. I will put a picture up. Um, so pink and grey striped leggings and then she'll have um, little dark pink shoes as well and the pattern comes with one dress um, and then you can there are a few free um, little accessory patterns and some other dress patterns that you can purchase um, so I may it would be nice to have a little jumper or cardigan for her as well so I have to have a look um, I'm hoping to knit a few different clothes so she can actually play with the toy and um, like undress and redress the little bunny. Um, yeah, but you should definitely check out Little Cotton Rabbits on Ravelry. She has the most adorable um, soft toy designs, all the animals. The sheep and the ram are probably my second favourite and the elephant. Oh, they're so cute. Um, yeah, so that one will come along before Christmas. And I think I'm going to wrap it up in a little box um, with all the clothes kind of set out inside. And I might even make little wire coat hangers. I don't know if I have time. <laughs> okay. The second whip is in my project bag. And this is my gather shawl. Um, so over the, cause it's been three weeks. So over probably the first fortnight, I was pretty much just knitting this and my knitting has slowed down a little <laughs> over this last week. Um, I don't know if it's because my mum and dad are home or I've just been distracted by other stuff. Um, yeah, my mum and dad are grey nomads. So we look after their house in Brisbane and they have a caravan and travel around Australia um, so it's a very good deal for us <laughs> and for them because their house gets looked after. Um, sorry it's a bit tangled. All right so you can see I've knit on this quite a bit and I'll just find last podcast. Oh it looks good. Um, I was up to this eggy so I had done that little tail bit and I've done now, I'm up to section four. I haven't wo woven in any ends yet. 
well, oh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I really love the colours. They go so well together. And I can put it on. Oh. <laughs> That'll actually probably sit down here a bit. Needles in the face. Um, yeah, it looks a bit funny because it's on the cable. Um, but yeah, this is going to be really good for when we go to um, New York and Canada next year. Um, as well as just like when it gets cold again, um, winter in Brisbane be a nice accessory to wear. Um, I have had a lot of fun knitting this. The lace sections are actually quite easy and of course I've made mistakes. Um, <laughs> should I show you? Probably not. Can you notice any mistakes? Probably. Um, but yeah, it's pretty forgiving, especially when you're actually wearing it, no one's going to know at all. Um, yeah, but it's just really relaxing going back and forth with the garter. And as I mentioned in last episode, I really love the increases in this. Um, and it's a crescent, so it does increase on either end, which is like really easy to remember. Um... Yeah, and little lacy loops. It's very fun. Um, so I'll have to pick this up again and probably by next podcast, maybe, I might be finished. Next one is the Aussie Sunshine socks that I was working on, which I haven't really been working on. I have frogged these too many times. Um, I figured out my issue though. Um, so been giving it in this one with the eggy. Um, <laughs> and I had a wrong stitch count. Rookie mistake. Um, so my nothing was lining up properly. Um, and I thought it was a problem with how I was doing the lace. It was not. You do just ignore um, the no stitch. It just doesn't really exist. Go figure. Um, thank you for your comments. <laughs> it did actually help. Um, so you can see now that my little, um, let's see, my little ridges for the twisted stitches are there. You can't, because I have, haven't really done much. Um, you can't really tell what it will look like. Um, yeah, but they, I am doing them right now, at least, even though it's hardly even a sock. Huh, it's basically a cuff. <laughs> I just I haven't really been um, mentally stimulated to do these just now probably because they take concentration. <laughs> so it's not that I'm bored with them, it's that they are more complicated than I'm used to. But still not too bad. Like I've kind of memorized the the gist of the repeats. Um yeah. <laughs> oh, they'll get done eventually not often that I actually have a spinning whip to show, um, but I have this one. I did this yesterday, um, just trying out some of the fibre that Grandma sent me. Um, so this is half, I think it's a 50 gram um, little poof thing. Um, so it's a really nice pink and purple gradient. Um, it kind of goes pink, then purple, then pink, and so forth. Um, so I've finished half and I've got the other half um, started this morning. Um, so I have been able to concentrate on spinning recently, which is nice. Um, and I really need to do some more spinning because I have too much fiber for my box now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's also kind of good that I've got like, um, fiber from grandma that I didn't invest anything in or, um, you know, 
just I can just practice freely without worrying about um, making yarn for a specific project or stuffing it up. So that's really nice. Um, and the colors are so pretty. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna do a two ply and I'm basically just practicing um, getting even um, width throughout. It is still a little bit thick and thin, but it's fairly good. Um, yeah, and then because I was having my tension issues with plying, um, this will be the first one that I've done with the knowledge that I need to make the um, wheel faster when I'm plying up. So that will be good. And this, um, I don't know, this will probably just go into the stash for um, part of a hat or a shawl or something like that. Um, so this one is, it is a whip. It's kind of a pre-whip. <laughs> um, so you will remember that I showed you, well, you might remember that I showed you um, some pink yarn, Bendigo Woolen Mills um, that I got from Grandma. Um, and I thought this pink, it's a bit bright. Like I probably wouldn't wear something made out of this. Um, and I had a, quite a nice quantity. So I thought, why not try a tea? And um, last episode I shared that I really wanted to knit Tegna. Um, I can't remember who that is by, but I will put it up. Um, so I thought I would test out and see if I can put some blue over this and make it a nice purple. So that's what I did. Um, so I just uh, skeined it up and it worked out wonderfully. So I think it's technically kettle dyeing where you have the yarn in water and then you pour color over and kind of mix it around a bit and pour some more in. Um, so that worked really well. It's kind of um, spacey and there are areas where it's kind of a bit pinkish still and then areas where it's almost the blue that I put in. Um, so that's that and in the bowl. So I'm excited to um, cast that on. I haven't bought the pattern yet, but it is in my queue, I believe. Um, yeah, I'll have to get a couple of other things done before I actually get properly started on knitting a sweater or a cardigan. I just feel like I've been putting it off for so long, <laughs> but I've got this yarn ready and I've almost got yarn ready for boom so January is looking like it's going to be summer top knitting um which is kind of silly because I'll be wanting to wear the summer tops in January <laughs> and I'll still be making them but such is life um, I'm sure lots of sweaters get made in one winter and then worn the next winter, so <laughs> oh, slow fashion. <laughs> so I have finished doing that lino cut that I showed you last episode. Um, I had to take out all of these middle bits because it was printing with white and it just, it didn't work. So um, I've done that. I've done a test print um, but it turned out a bit funny because I was applying the permaset with a sponge and then kind of putting the roller over. Um, yeah, I'll have to find either a, um, a sponge roller or some other trick to do it. Um, yeah, but I like the pattern that it's worked out really well as the repeat. And it's very, very easy to line up where the next block should be. Um, so I'm going to mount this onto a piece of wood so that I can um, use it kind of like a stamp a bit easier and so that it lasts longer because if it's just like this, it's going to snap and um, get wrecked. 
So I'll do that and then I'll figure out a way of getting a nicer texture for the paint. Um, and then I'll be good to go. I can print this on my um, Avo fabric and make up a project bag. Hopefully in time for the next fiber share because then I can share another little special project bag. It's time for treasures. Um, as I mentioned, there are lots of treasures this week again. It seems to be the um, bulkiest part of this podcast. <laughs> it's, it's not because I shop a lot. <laughs> um, although I have two things which I um, have actually purchased and then the rest is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the rest is um, stuff that my grandma has sent me. Um, I'm a lucky girl. Uh, so the first one is this cute little buddy and it is a measuring tape. Um, I have been waiting until um, Spotlight or Linkraft have had some really, really cute animal measuring tapes that I can put in my project bag um, and I tested one out that was just like a plain color the other day and then I turned around and this guy was there and I was like yes the other one it's a uh, thingy didn't work very well but this one is super quick huh? um, he's so cute so the other thing that I actually purchased was this. I think it's Chopelle Wool um, Crazy Zorbe Ball, made in Germany. So last time I was at the yarn store, I was eyeing this off. Um, there are actually a few colors of the crazy one that I love, um, but I got this one to either put in Ryan's stocking for Christmas as socks or just as yarn. <laughs> we'll see where we, we get to with the Christmas knitting. Um, yeah, but I just love, like, they're very Harry Potter. Um, just like earthy colors and magic. Hmm. So um, this one is wool nylon I think yep 70% superwash and 25% nylon um, and it is 100 grams 420 meters um, so great quantity for socks um, oh yeah so speaking of socks that I might knit with this I got a pattern from the wool club I really like their sock patterns um, I'll put up a picture. I actually bought the Sokatemba um, club patterns. So it, it was three patterns for like the price of two, which was really good. Um, and they're all very lovely. Um, one is uh, some twisted stitches. The other is cables. And then there's one with uh, all over texture. Um, and I really like in um, the all over texture one, I'll put, <laughs> put up the names for you. Um, that the, um, the heel has the eye of partridge, but it's alternating colors. Um, so you get a really nice effect on that as well. Um, I will probably do the twisted stitches one, but if I knit them after Christmas, then I will ask Ryan to choose a pattern. Um, so that he gets the socks that he really wants. But if I knit them before Christmas, then I'll do the twisted stitches. Huge Santa sack of yarn and fiber that I got from grandma. I'm just going to share a few of the things. Um, I will start with the acrylic stuff. Um, just this, there's a lot of like plain color acrylic. There were about 50 balls of plain colors in acrylic. So crazy amount. I may have to end up like giving some to um, preschools or schools. I asked Ryan but he said he didn't want it at school um, but maybe he can ask some of the other teachers the prep there might um, might fancy some yarn for Christmas craft or something. Um, anyway so I got a couple of balls of this one. It's a um, mohair-esque acrylic. 
um, very nice and fluffy. I like the color, it matches my hair. <laughs> Um, and then a couple of balls also of this lovely pink. Um, similar, it's acrylic, but it's like it's mohair blend. Um, a bit fuzzy. So I'm not really sure what I'll knit with these yet, but I just really like the colours. Um, so I thought I'd show those. And then I've got some um, mohair acrylic blend, 65% mohair, 31% acrylic, 4% polyester metal. And I've got two colours. Um, it is Odessa Double Knitting Yarn. Um, so they have the sparkles in them. I don't know if you can see. Grey and a white. I think I've only got one of the white and three of the grey. So that'll be nice to have in the stash to um, add to something. Um, the next one is actually a bamboo wool blend. So um, viscose derived from bamboo, 80% and 20% wool. I have quite a few of these. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but white is always good because I can dye it. I think I've got about eight of those. This one is also a blend wool acrylic, 50-50. Um, I really like the colour of this as well. I don't know where this one comes from. It's called Craftworks. It could just be from a $2 shop originally. Um, I've got a few of those as well. Um, I don't, it's definitely not a jumpers quantity, but um, might be able to make a few hats or something like that. Okay, the next one is a bit crinkly. I didn't want to take it out of the packet, but it is Clekeaton 5 ply and it is wool. And this, um, the packet says that, that um, the 10 balls will make a size 12 jumper. So I am not size 12, <laughs> um, but I could probably make like a three quarter sleeves or um, like a smaller cardigan or something like that um, with that. I love that color. Um, shoot, the color again. Such a nice green. It's kind of like a cool, cool forest green. Um, and this packet says, $2.50 from Vinnie's. Bargain. <laughs> um, yeah. That's going to be fun. Um, Alright, that's all of the um, wool that I was going to show you. Um, as I said, the rest is just like plain. It's all over my floor right now. <laughs> Actually, I took a picture of it all in a giant pile, so I'll put that up so you can see how crazy this um, bag was. Uh, Grandma sent a few books and stuff as well, um, but probably nothing too noteworthy. A lot of magazines. Um, yeah, I'll have a flip through. But <laughs> um, So the next, next bit is the fibre that she sent me. Um, so some really like uh, odd things that I haven't um, seen before and some hand-dyed roving bits and pieces. So the first one, it came in this little, um, what do you call this? Scarf thing, um, which is actually kind of pretty. Um, and it had all of these locks so I, th I don't know exactly what it is. It could be Surrey Alpaca. It could be some kind of long wool sheep. Um, I don't think it's mohair, but it could be mohair. It has so much vegetable matter in it. It's kind of hilarious. You can't really see it, but it's full of vegetable matter. Um, so I will have to carve that up and... That might give me maybe a better idea, I don't know. Um, but this scarf thingy, oh, wrong way around, 
it actually says Australian Waddle on the bottom, which I thought was really funny because this is Waddle and Dob. <laughs> so that's nice. I may like put it up as my background or something. <laughs> Um, I thought I might actually, since I've just mentioned Waddle and Dob, um, tell you what that means. Um, so I was looking for a name for my podcast and I was telling Ryan that I really wanted it to be something that connected to um, the idea of home and to using the things that you find around you um, to make something new, which is a lot of what I do, um, with natural dyeing or, um, you know, op shopping, you're not buying new things necessarily to make something, you're kind of seeing what there is out there already, um, or around you at home. I, I kind of, um, grew up going having an idea of something to make and then going to the shed and seeing what there was that I could use. Um, so that's probably where it comes from. Um, but Waddle and, as I was telling him that, he said, oh, what about Waddle and Dob? And I thought, what is that? <laughs> it sounds nice, but what actually is that? Um, and he explained that it's a uh, old style of making houses. And I was like, oh, perfect. I wanted it to be something to do with home and making from like primitive resources basically. Um, so Waddle and Dob houses are kind of like a wooden structure that's woven um, together. <laughs> I might put up a picture as well to explain it better. Um, and then it is um, covered in mud. Um, or like a mud mixture to make it a solid structure. Um, so it's really primitive way of making houses. Um, it's probably still done today. I actually, in India, no, Nepal, Nepal, I saw a lady um, redoing her the walls of her house in a village with this like muddy mixture, which is really cool. Um, anyway, that's a really roundabout way of telling you um, about our name, Waddle and Dob. It's just kind of about using what you have around you and um, being a bit resourceful with the things that you make. Hmm. Okay, on to the rest of the fiber. This was one of the ones, the ones that I haven't um, got my hands on yet. So this is a Romney, um, no, just straight Romney. Um, 60 grams. There's other stuff written there, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> um, so Grey Romney, and it's, um, it's a little bit rough, but not very. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> just me squeezing fiber. Um, I thought that it would have like a sheepy smell, but as a matter of fact, I think it's been sitting around for a while. So it kind of smells, you know, that up shop dusty kind of smell. Um, not very pleasant. Um, but yeah, that's a nice little um, bat that I can spin up. Um, and then another similar one, but in like a creamy, creamy light grey kind of colour. Um, and this is a Romney uh, mixed with Merino, um, 82 grams. And it says here it's homespun wool, washed and carded, ready to spin, various natural colours, some guy named Jeff. Hmm. <laughs> so who knows uh, when these actually came off of a sheep. <laughs> it's probably like in the 80s or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, the next few are Merino, about 18, 18.5 micron. Um, they're all hand dyed. Um, I think two of them are by the same person and the other two are by someone else. Um, but the first two are quite 
They're really nice, earthy kind of colours. They both sort of remind me of bird colours. Um, so this one reminds me of a kookaburra. I'm really looking forward to spinning this. The colours are so beautiful. It's like pinky, brown, to bright blue, like, wow. <laughs> um, so when I store these, I'll probably just do them up into a braid because they kind of fit in my box a bit easier. Um, this one's a bit more well together, <laughs> little disc. Um, and this one kind of reminds me of a butcher bird or a magpie. Maybe more a butcher bird because it's got the browns. Yeah. These will be really fun to spin. And I don't have to worry. I can just spin, practice. Um, the next one's really bright. Um, so this one's called Lemon Blossom. Bright oranges and reds, yellow, um, also merino. And then this one is called Primrose. Really kind of sea colours, bright sea colours. So these are all 50 gram little bumps, um, which will be really easy because like 25 grams, that's pretty easy to spin up in an afternoon or something. Um, so if you just spend two afternoons and then you can ply up and you've got some pretty um, little skeins of yarn. Um, and then the last one of the hand dyed was this lovely caramel toffee. Mm. Reminds me of like a um, iced latte with caramel on the top <laughs> and cream. Yummy. Um, I think that one was a hundred grams maybe I don't know it it kind of came in this kit that said um make a loom scarf and I was like I don't have the thing to make that so I will just spin this up <laughs> um cool um this next little one is I think they're kind of um sorry about the crinkles they kind of intend this to be used for little felted toys um so I, I might have a go at that I've got a needle felting um thingy um so I might might see if I can make like a little sheepy or a bunny sheeps and bunnies <laughs> or an alpaca <laughs> um yeah, just the little decorations. Um, and whatever I don't use for needle felting, I'll just add to um, some different blends. That might be nice. Some pastel with white. Mm -hmm. um, also merino. The next one. The next one is some um, white Siri rovings. I'll show you the label. So this is from the farm near my grandma, um, which has been there for a while, but I think it might change owners soon. Also, I have heard. Um, it is called Banyanda Alpacas in Gimpi. Um, and they have some very cute um alpacas they farm mostly Surrey um but a few wakaya as well um the Surrey is quite expensive fiber to buy so last time um when I visited so only been there once um when I visited I got um a a Surrey fleece and a wakaya fleece um, it's still very cheap to buy raw fleece as far as fleece goes. Um, but this is 
done up into pencil roving. So you can just sit with this box and spin away so easily. So I'm very glad that grandma gave me this. Um, trying to find an end. They're so soft. Very lovely. Um, and that is, oh, it's from Ella, the alpaca, and um, it is 215 grams. Um, it was originally $43, but I do not know if grandma um, bought this from the farm or if she found it by luck at a op shop. Um, if she bought it at the farm. Thank you for paying so much. Um, yeah. Now I have three different alpaca um, fleeces from Bun Bunyanda. That's a tricky one to say. Bunyanda alpacas. That's the end of the show and tell bit. Um, so I thought I would tell you a little bit about what's been going on in life and the things that have stopped me from knitting. Um, <laughs> um, so I had a few outings recently, probably more than my usual fortnight slash three weeks. Um, I shot the Vegication Night Market over on the north side. It was really nice, a very nice evening again. Um, the atmosphere at this market is always really good. Um, great food, there's music and speakers that I caught snippets of. I kind of had to walk around taking photos so I didn't get to stay in one place for very long. Um, and my auntie and my cousin were there, um, so it was really good to catch up with them. Um, they are vegans, so hence why they were at a vegan market. Um, uh, <laughs> lost my train of thought again. Um, oh yeah, so uh, we were about to leave and then my friend Rachel appeared and I was like, what? I kind of knew that she might be going, but she was actually there as a part of um, the Boomerang Bags organization. And they were uh, teaching people a little bit of DIY. So I was like, hmm, I might just stick around. Um, so I took some photos for them as well. Um, it's an international organization, but the, um, and then they have little branches within different cities. So they have just started one over at Nanda. Um, and because they're like just starting up, they're trying to get the word out there that they exist. Um, so I thought, yes, I'll take some photos for them. Um, and they can use them to help spread the message. Um, so what a boomerang bag is, um, is a bag that you can pick up from the shopping center, do your shopping, um, put all your things in the reusable bag, and then when you go back to the shopping center next time, if you're finished with the bag or you've um, remembered to bring your own bags that time, you can put the boomerang bag back. Um, I think that Nanda have kind of trial and errored it and they have figured out that people don't return the bags um, because they're too nice to return um, and people end up using them over and over um, like you're meant to use a reusable bag. So they have just started charging, um, I think it's $2 or something for um, their bags. And they're really nice. They use recycled fabric um, and they look really sturdy. They've got a couple of pockets. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, at the Vegication markets, they were doing um, the no sew version out of old t-shirts. So Ryan and I um, got our scissors and um, picked a t-shirt. He picked a Ninja Turtles one and I got one with like a little patch. Um, I think it was from Mexico, um, like a little tourist kind of patch on it. Um, 
and you kind of like chop the ends and then tie some knots, turn it inside out, and you've got a bag out of a t-shirt. Um, yeah, so we've used those um, at the market, and they're really good. So I thought I'd mention that. Um, next. Um, okay, so I went, um, as I mentioned, my parents are home at the moment. Um, so uh, dad was up in Gimpy seeing grandma and mum and I thought we would have a day out. So we went to the yarn store, um, oops, Daisy, um, young, glorious yarn. And I bought the um, Chappelle wool and mum bought some, um, what was it? Oh, Cascade 220 to start making a mitre square blanket. Um, she took a liking to one that was in the store and was like, do you have a pattern for this? And I was like, yes. So um, she hasn't cast on yet, but um, I'm sure once we've done all this like little Christmas knitting, she will get into that. Um, yeah, she bought really um, lovely deserty kind of colours and she wants it for a blanket for in the caravan um, for when they travel around. So it will look really nice in there. They've got kind of creams, um, cream tones. Um, yeah, so we also went, we did the usual West End uh, jaunt and went to Grown and Mappins and I bought um, a couple of plants. <laughs> um, what else we do? Yeah, coffee, yum yum. <laughs> um, so that was really nice. Uh, and then, <clears throat> pardon moi. Um, the other outing we did was movies with friends. So we went and saw um, Murder on the Orient Express. Um, with two of our friends that was really nice we got um, went out for dinner beforehand and bought some ice creams from Woolies because that's like the cheaper version of buying ice cream in South Bank um, yeah if you're in Brisbane and you are sick of paying heaps for movies go to the IMAX at South Bank because it's like student prices for everybody um really old school so yeah um murder on the orient express was really good not i didn't really know what to expect i hadn't seen the original movie um from way back but yeah the actors were really good um kept you kind of guessing the whole way so did its job as a murder mystery um and beautiful scenery just so much snow mm. <laughs> um the last thing oh also tv related ish um we finished stranger things probably like most of the world but i thought i'd just mention um we really liked it we were sad because we couldn't watch it on our projector screen um we kind of uh used up all of the bulb and it went pop so we have been just watching things on the laptop since then and uh it it's um it's been too long <laughs> but i kind of rewatch it on the big screen because um the second season of stranger things has like so much more cinematic um big effects um yeah if you haven't watched stranger things at all it's so good <laughs> um i love eleven and there are some really great lines in the new one and the old one. I think Friends Don't Lie is probably my favorite and Mouth Breather. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Well, that's all for this uh, episode. I will see you in another fortnight. Hopefully I will not be um, delayed again. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I'm not never going to be too hard on myself uh, for being late with a podcast. It's just when it happens, it happens. Um, I really enjoyed doing them and um, 
hang out with you, um, comment so we can get to know each other, um, tell me the things that you like about the podcast or things you want to see more of. You probably want to see more knitting. <laughs> this one was so light on actual knitting. Um, yeah, I promise soon and I will have actual garments soon. I promise. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe if you have not already um, so you can keep up to date with what I've been doing. Um, you can also head over to the Ravelry group. Um, it is called Waddle and Dob. Pardon me. Um, I don't think I've set it up all pretty yet, um, but I'll try and do that while I'm editing this week's podcast. Um, so that we can have a place to um, to chat about things, um, things you've learnt, um, share some pictures of what you've been knitting. Um, we might in the future have cows or something like that. Um, yeah, who knows? Yeah, cool. So you can find me on um, Instagram as Leslie Enid and the same on Ravelry. I hope you have a really good fortnight and get lots of knitting done and enjoy the beginning of the Christmas madness. Make those Christmas lists and buy all the yarn.